the clicks. Oh, the clicks. Pre-amplifiers. What's going on with this category of products? What do they do? Why would you want one? Do you want a passive or an active pre-amplifier? What situations are each applicable to? What's going on here? This video is going to do two things. First and foremost, it is a review of the Hollow Audio Serene pre-amplifier and headphone amp. This is the Wildism Audio Edition of the Serene, and I also have the Wildism Audio Edition of the May. There are links to the May, Serene, Goldpoint, and everything else mentioned in this video in the description, as well as the test tracks that I'll be using throughout. If you are just here for the Serene review, you can skip to this timestamp, but I'm also going to be talking about why you might want to preamp in the first place, what the difference and pros and cons of passive versus active preamps are. So if you want to learn a little bit about that, then continue watching from here. Now, there are three primary things which a preamplifier is intended to do. The first is volume control. Now, with a headphone amplifier, so for example, this is the Gashelli Irish, you have a potentiometer, and that allows you to control the volume. Therefore, you don't really need to preamplify with a headphone system for that reason. With a speaker system, you normally do. This is the Benchmark AHB2. It is a power amplifier. Power amplifiers are very, very common with speakers, and that means that there is no volume control. There is an input and an output. Sometimes there is a gain selection, but not always. This one has three gain selections. A lot of others like uh, the Past Labs amplifiers, as far as I'm aware, don't have gain control at all. So you need to do the volume control before the amp. Pre-amp. This is the primary reason why you would buy one. It is to take the voltage coming from your DAC or from your phono stage, from your vinyl system, and either attenuate it, which if you're using a digital system, if you're using a DAC, then normally you're going to be attenuating because they output quite a bit of voltage. But if you are using a vinyl system with a phono stage, normally you're going to need to add some gain. So an active preamplifier versus a passive might be the only choice if you're using vinyl. I'll get onto the difference between active and passive in a sec though. The second reason is input and output switching. On the screen, you can see the backside of the Hollow Serene, and there is plenty of IO here. Selectable inputs, so you can do this with the remote as well, XLR 1 and 2, RCA 1, 2 and 3, and then it goes back. With the gold point, you can configure it either as two inputs, one outputs, or one input, two outputs. Mine is the one input, two output version. That's the other reason, so input and output switching. Because if you have a speaker system, say, in your living room, then you might have your DAC, you might have a vinyl system, you might have a home theater receiver, you might have something else. And so being able to switch between all those different devices and output to one main speaker system without having to actually change cables around yourself is quite important. With a headphone system, that's not normally the case because you're not going to be running vinyl and a DAC and the home theater thing all on a headphone system. Uh, so again, this is mainly applicable to speakers. And the third reason is sound. Now, there are two main approaches to this. The first being to add or change the sound. Tube preamplifiers, for example. There are companies like Prima Luna, Macintosh, and others that make tube preamplifiers. These are intended to change the sound, to add a little bit of that tube holographic presentation to what might be a solid state amplifier. Now, some people like to use tube amplifiers with tube preamplifiers, and that's fine too, but it's all about tuning your system to make it sound how you want to sound. This, for example, is a solid state amp. And so using a tube preamplifier with a solid state amplifier might allow you to drive really difficult loads like the Hoffman Susvara or some really hard to drive uh, speakers, which you wouldn't be able to drive with a tube preamplifier otherwise. Finding a tube headphone amp uh, which can actually drive these properly, you're going to be spending several thousand dollars. So that allows you to use a tube sounding system with all the power and control and output impedance benefits of a solid state amp. Now the other direction is something like this. This is the gold point. This is wires, input, selectable resistors, and then an output. That is it. There is no active circuitry, no capacitors, no diodes, no nothing, just wires, resistors, a little bit more wires. That's it. This is intended to sound as transparent and alter the sound as little as it possibly can. And it does a really good job of that. Uh, if you want a super mini review of the gold point, here we go. I cannot tell the difference at all between having this in my system versus just correcting my, uh, connecting my DAC to an amp directly. 
It sounds the same, it measures the same, this thing measures like a wire. Not even that, oh, it's probably a little bit too low to be inaudible, it's too low to be detectable. It's It measures like a wire, it sounds like a wire, just selectively quieter, it, it's fantastic. So if a passive preamplifier like this, or an autoformer, for example, there are a couple categories of passive preamplifiers. If that's the cleanest and most transparent, I hate using the word transparent normally. I hate when people use it for DACs and amps because you don't have a reference. You don't know what it sounds like not to use a DAC. So you can't say something's transparent because it's inherently going to sound different because there isn't a reference. You always have to use an amplifier. You don't know what not using an amplifier sounds like. The preamplifier is the only component of the system, realistically, that you can take out and see if it sounds the same. I can just connect my DAC and my amp directly and listen that way, and then I can put this in the chain and see if it sounds different, and it doesn't. So therefore I can call this transparent, whereas I wouldn't call that transparent, and I wouldn't call this transparent because I don't think there is a reference point there. Anyway, if a passive preamplifier is the most transparent way to do volume control and input-output switching as well, why would you spend loads of money on an active preamplifier like this Hollow Serene, like a Pass Labs? What's the point? Well, that's because there are a few drawbacks to using a passive. Firstly, you don't normally get a remote. I need to be in arm's reach in order to use the gold point. For a headphone system, that's fine, doesn't matter. I can change the input and control the volume at my desk. In a speaker system, that's not the case, and I need a remote. So I can just control the volume like that, I can select inputs, I can mute everything, I can do whatever I need from across the room from the comfort of, comfort of my sofa, whereas this I have to be in arm's reach. And so for a lot of speaker systems, that's not going to be ideal. Additionally, with a passive preamplifier like this gold point, you can't use long cables. This is an interesting situation where cables absolutely make a difference, not just a maybe subjectively, as in it's a measurable, predictable behavior. This is because the output impedance, because you're putting a resistor in the signal path, combined with the capacitance of the cable, which increases as the cable gets longer, forms a resistor-capacitor low-pass filter, and that means that you get treble roll-off. So I've not been able to use this with my monitors, because I'd need to have a about a 2-meter cable in order to feed that, and I get a little bit of treble roll-off. With just a headphone system at the desk, where I've got a half meter cable going to my amp, it's not a problem, and that's an ideal solution. But I want to do speakers later in the year, and so I needed something where I can control it from across the room, where I can use longer cables going to monoblocks or something, and so you need an active preamp for that. An active preamp doesn't have the same restriction with long cables that a passive does. So this means that for most speaker setups, you're going to want an active preamp. For a desk setup, a headphone setup, a passive preamplifier can be a very useful tool, especially if you're doing something like running 1266 or Susvara uh, or HE6 off a speaker amp. Something like a power amplifier and a passive preamplifier is a fantastic solution. It's a bit niche and it's obviously not something which most people are going to be doing, but if that is you, then this is a really ideal combination. And objectively and subjectively, it's fantastic. So when I was looking for an active preamplifier, I needed something which would ideally match the gold point and transparency as closely as possible. I didn't want something that would make things warmer or more cl clinical or analytical or whatever. I liked how my system sounded. I didn't want to change it. I wanted it exactly as it was. I wanted the preamp to provide IO, volume control, allow me to use long cables, and that was it. And without spending a stupid amount of money, there wasn't really anything that seemed to tick those boxes. The closest thing maybe being the topping pre-90, which I, I have a bit of an aversion to nested feedback-based op-amp topologies. I don't like them. I find that they typically sound quite cold and clinical, and so even though that has lots of I.O. and it measures amazing, and it was quite reasonably priced, I wasn't too keen on it. I've not tried it, so I don't know what it sounds like, but I, I was averse to it. And then the Serene got announced, and I was very excited because one, I love the May. I love what Hollow has made so far, and this, the measurements were insane. Not just good, but insane. It beats nested feedback-based op-amp topologies like the pre-90. Harmonic What harmonic distortion? There isn't any. On the screen you can see a graph. This was taken by Wolf X, aka L7 Audio Lab. It's insane. The performance of this is insane. It is fully discrete. It is fully class A. No nested feedback trickery or anything like that. It's just brilliant. And so that was pretty cool. It had all the features I wanted, and I put a pre-order in. 
let's talk about the build. So, on the outside you have the standard hollow chassis. It's absolutely lovely. Brushed black metal aluminium, copper on the sides, copper buttons here. This, this is new, obviously, there's this big knob. Now, this is a relay controlled attenuator. So it's not like this one where you are manually turning the resistor attenuator yourself. It's just a computer controlled thing adjusting the relays inside. But this feels tactile. It's not just a smooth turning knob. You can actually see there are steps to it and it feels fantastic. The build on this is solid as ever. It's this, I mean, you can look at the May here. It's a bit of better angle because the same chassis. It's thick, it's heavy, it looks gorgeous. Display is lovely. You can just turn the display off as well. So you can just press that button on the remote and, and then it will go blank and it'll only turn on when you're adjusting the volume. The remote, the build of the remote is beautiful. It's this single piece of aluminium, sandblasted, copper buttons here. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's turn the display back on. Build outside is wonderful and the I.O. is plentiful as well. What about the internals? The internals are just as gorgeous as the outside. There are not many products which I look at the internals and go, wow, that really, really looks pretty. But hollow stuff is just fantastic. Lots of really high quality components here. Again, everything is fully discreet. No op amps or anything like that. Film capacitors, nice ones from Mundorf. Linear power supply, everything separated, shielded. It's just beautiful. And even as, as a discrete design, the measurements speak for themselves. So build internal and external is absolutely phenomenal. Even the accessories that it comes with are just wonderful. Could not ask for more. So in terms of sound, this has been really quite difficult. As I've said, the gold point is to my ears and objectively speaking, transparent. There are not many situations where I think that word is appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate for any DAC or any amp, but a preamp is the one situation where you can take it out of the chain and compare with and without fairly. I cannot tell the difference at all when I have the gold point in the chain versus just using a straight cable to an amplifier. This is transparent and objectively speaking it measures transparent, it measures like a wire as well. So that is what I'm comparing it to. That is my reference point. How does this sound? And it's really tricky to describe because, oh my god, this sounds so close to that. It is so similar. The difference between this and this is more subtle than most DAC differences. That's how similar it is. And that's good, because that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something which would give me volume control, would give me input-output switching, without changing the sound of my system, whilst remaining as transparent as possible, whilst remaining as uncolored as possible, and this is doing that exactly as I wanted it to. So that's really good, but it does make it quite difficult to describe. And this isn't identical to the goal point. There are a lot of times where I would say it was identical and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all, but it isn't exactly the same. And there are some situations where it sounds just a little bit different. Any kind of treble, any kind of staging, it's identical. Any kind of mid-range, it's identical. The one area where this is slightly different to the goal point is bass, is low end. And the difference is that this is a little bit punchier. Now, low end, sometimes you can have things like uh, an E-stat, which is ridiculously fast and snappy. It's really, really speedy and detailed and resolving. And that initial slap of any kind of low end element is very precise, but then there's nothing to back it up. It's not very full, it's not very textured or bodied. And then you also have some opposite stuff where there's loads of mid bassy weight behind it, but there's no definition, there's no resolution or snap. This takes the sound that I get from a transparent setup, like the goal point, and then just adds a little bit of not just speed, but also weight and texture as well. It's just a little bit of an all-round improvement, and I don't know why. That does not make sense to me. It should not be better than a wire. Why? Why is that happening? I don't know. But all I can say is that that is what I'm hearing. So this song, for example, this is the song that I was using in the intro, and because this, the sound explanation of this is going to be relatively short, I'm not going to be using all that many demo tracks. So if I got about one minute in this...
these are so similar in everything other than the low end, where this is just a little bit punchier. And again, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be the case. But that's what I'm hearing. It's so close, it's not a big difference at all. And to be honest, if I didn't have them set up in this AB config like I do at the moment, I would not be able to tell the difference. They are so close together. But this one just has a little bit more punch to it. I don't know if that's an impedance matching thing. That's got a fairly low output impedance. This is a very high output impedance, and I'm normally running it about midway. So there shouldn't be. But that's what I'm hearing. I don't know why. So I'm really sorry that the subjective description and review of this is so short, but to be honest, the shortness of it and the lack of things I have to say should in, in their own say more than me spending 20 minutes talking about it. This sounds identical and measures identically to basically nothing at all, to just a wire. This sounds almost identical to that. It is so close, I would not be able to tell without an AB and even then, in anything other than a track like this, which really kind of shows off low end, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They sound the same. They sound absolutely identical. I don't know how Jeff Zoo and Hollow Audio have done it, but this is the best measuring active preamp I'm aware of, and it's the most transparent sounding active preamp. It's just phenomenal. I absolutely love this. But it has another trick up its sleeve. This is not just a preamp, this is also a headphone amp. So. The output impedance of the XLR2 ports is 40 ohms, and the RCA ports are all 20 ohms. The XLR1 port, though, is 3 ohms, and that's because they didn't put any series load resistors on that one, so that you can run headphones. This is not just a preamp, this is also a fully discrete Class A 3 watt per channel headphone amplifier. Now, I'm using the Hi-Fi-Man Aria, and that's because these are quite a difficult headphone to drive. I'm not using the Cesvara because realistically, even though you can run those on this, it gets them loud enough. That It's not an issue. Those don't sound their best on anything but a speaker amp, so I don't like to even try. The Arias, though, sound fantastic on this. This is Dark Place by Logic. Now, I'm not actually going to play this through the virtual cable, I'm just going to hold this up to the camera so that you guys can hear what it sounds like. Obviously, this is a phone microphone, so take it with a massive pinch of salt, but it should show you how well this is driving these headphones. For the person who's listening, fed up and tired of people dismissing them, I'm with you. I've been through what you've been through, and no amount of money can take away the feeling of insecurity. Only through maturity can we overcome. Feel like I've been overrun, feel like it's over, I'm done. Whoever told you success gonna make you happy, you've been lied to. All of my dreams came true, but I bleed and cry too. Never been perfect, I failed every time I tried to. Feeling hated and underappreciated every time I look in the mirror, I wonder why you... This thing is a fantastic headphone amplifier. It sounds beautiful with the Arias, with the HD800. It has no trouble driving them. There's no lack of dynamics or anything, which can sometimes happen on uh, headphone amps which can't quite supply the needed current. Not an issue here. It's not the best with Sesvara, just because, again, Sesvara need oodles of power. But if you are a Sesvara user, or maybe even a 1266 user, which don't need as much as Sesvara, but still a lot of people do like to run those on speaker amps, there is another version of this coming. Jeff Zhu is making a dedicated headphone amp version, which won't be intended to be used as a preamplifier, but it will seemingly have quite a lot more power. He is using the Sesvara to design it. So that's going to be quite exciting. I will get one of those to review as soon as it is out, but in the meantime, it looks great, the build is amazing, relay controlled, class A, the remote's great, it's a fantastic headphone amplifier which can even drive proper planars and everything. I can't find anything to criticize. This product is fantastic. The, the only thing that I could maybe nitpick is the, the you can hold the buttons on the remote to change the volume, and if you want to do it quickly you can use uh, the knob like that, but if you press really quickly it doesn't quite work. Uh, and the same for the input switching, you have to kind of, it, it takes a little bit. On the uh, button on the actual chassis itself though, not an issue. That is the only thing that I wish was slightly different. I wish this was a little bit more responsive for fast button presses. That's it though. This is fantastic. So Jeff Zhu, Hollow Audio, well done. I don't know how you did this, but this is an absolutely stellar product and it has my full recommendation. This is the kind of thing which, if it was released by 
quite a lot of the other well-known manufacturers, they would be charging 10 to 20 grand for it and people would be, wouldn't be batting an eyelid because it meets that standard. The fact that this is like two grand is insane. And I absolutely recommend that anyone buys this if they are looking for an active preamplifier in their system. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I've got a few updates and things to tell you about, but firstly, join my Discord server if you haven't already. And also if you are supporting me on Patreon, thank you guys so much, especially my Diamond and Legend tier patrons, Gravitas, Chris, Ross Kyle, Little Joe, Crack, Daniel Mellinger, Jeremy Zagorski, King jong Un, Lana Bennett, and Luxifer. You guys are fantastic. You're the ones that are making all this happen. Uh, I've got some other reviews and stuff coming up, including the iFi IDSD lineup. That's probably gonna be next, followed shortly by the Harmonic Dyn Zeus. Uh, and then everything else as well, Hollow May, uh, Arias, HD800, all the good stuff, um, and some exciting things on the way from a few friends, which I will post about once those are uh, actually arrive. I also have some deep dive videos. Obviously my MQA video um, blew up a little bit. I did not expect that to happen. I have some other videos of a similar vein coming, one of which is gonna be the complete story of D to A conversion. So it's gonna explain how every single step inside a DAC works in a way which hopefully anyone will be able to understand. So if you have no idea how a DAC works and you think that would be interesting to learn about, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that one. That's gonna be split up into a few just because it'll be too much to put into one video. And then I also have another video which is gonna be testing a few common audio file improvements. So various types of cables, power supplies, power conditioning, that kind of thing. It's gonna look at a lot of that. Uh, the testing so far on that has been quite interesting. I'll say that. If you wanna know more, uh, then join the Patreon Telegram chat. We've got like 60 people in there now. It's really active, it's really good fun. So do that. Um, lots of sneak peeks and stuff. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.